This is Zambia, this is nation. Yeah, yeah. Welcome to the fearless debate on your channel of choice, a movie, television. Those of you that are watching us on Movie TV Decoder, many thanks to you and we appreciate your support and uh, may you continue to subscribe. Those of you that are catching us on Top Star Decoder, yours is channel 104. Those of you that are joining us on social media, Facebook it is Ask Movie. Remember to invite a friend and let a friend tell a friend that the fearless debate is on on Blunt Talk and remember to leave us uh, your messages to, or to comment on the topic of a discussion. My name is Kelvin Tabola Chifokol, and this is Blunt Talk. Two gentlemen are battling it out uh, tonight, and uh, these are not strange faces, but these are familiar faces. Die Hard a Patriotic Front uh, member, Max Chongo, makes an appearance after a long time on Blunt Talk. Max, good evening and welcome to Blunt Talk. Indeed. Are you ready for Are you ready for Blunt Talk? Of course I am. Thank you so much. Also, not stranger to your screens, he is uh, the National Youth uh, Secretary General for the United Party for National Development. Trevor Mwinde makes an appearance. Trevor, good evening and welcome to Blunt Talk. Gentlemen, the rules of the game are still the same. They haven't changed. You'll be given three minutes to respond to your question. And uh, if your colleague has said something which you, you want to clarify or to respond to, when, I, when your, your turn comes to respond, when I give you three minutes, you, you can use this, the, the very three minutes to respond or to add or to correct your colleague as well as respond to your new question. Gentlemen, are we okay with the rules? Max, much okay. Trevor, I think so. We are. Uh, Max, how do you prefer I address you uh, this evening? Should I call you Max or Max Chongo, MC or Die Hard? <laughs> no, you can call me Max or Chongo, PF Die Hard. Thank you, Trevor Mwinde. Should I call you Trevor Mwinde, TM or Mwinde? Whichever way, sir, is comfortable with you. Thank you so much. Now let me start with you, Max. As Zambian, we are known to be good people, loving one another. And let's start on a somber mood, and I will be able to change the gears as we uh, uh, move forward. On Saturday, around 21.30, news broke out that uh, a leader of the opposition, uh, a, Republic, uh, a Republican Progressive Party, RPP, James Rukuku, answered the call of the Lord. Um, he was, I should say, a young politician, or among us the youths, although he wasn't a youth, but a young politician, a vibrant and full of life. How are you remembering the late um, James Kasandam Sendeka Lukuku as a PF diehard? Your three minutes. I sir. think, uh, personally, I remember him as um, a very vibrant young politician with a lot of courage and... Um, a very good and jovial guy. I remember he posted something about my private life and then when I called him, uh, he was telling me to say, look, that is just politics. I was just trying to pull your leg. So I think he's a jovial guy, a very nice guy, very courageous and um, very vibrant. We will greatly miss him in the political arena. You still have your three minutes. That's all. Yeah. Okay. yeah, I'm sure as we move forward, you'll be able to exhaust your three minutes. Trevor, James Kasanda Musende Kalukuku was uh, the Alliance spokesperson. Like I've mentioned, he was also a young guy or a young politician. How, uh, how do you describe the death or the demise of uh, James, and how are you remembering uh, James Kasanda Lukuku from the UPN? First of all, I would like to thank uh, Movie Television once more again, and I would also like to thank the Patriotic Front of the PF for government for sending Mr. Max Chongu this, uh, to these studios, and I would also like to thank many Zambians that have uh, taken time to start to watch this program this evening. 
I am uh, uh, hit hard by such uh, uh, happenings of our society lately. We have had also funeral funerals within our lineages and genealogies in our, within our families, where we even abruptly or accidentally met with the comrade Max Chongo. We are, we have been hit as a country because uh, James Kassanda Lukuku, uh, he was uh, a young, courageous politician of our time because at a time when there was a stand up for Zambia, he stood against uh, political stewards in the names of Michael Chirufia Sata, <laughs> Arabi, he did what was best, but we still hoped for the best for him. We are still mourning, and uh, just as exhibited by our political party, UPND, and the other alliance partners, including Charles Mirupi, we have been to the funeral house, and uh, we have been represented even up to this time. We are also hoping that we can uh, not play politics of divide and rule. I am also inviting uh, Comrade Max to the funeral house. There is no animosity. There is no amount of uh, grudge and hatred because before we became politicians, we are coming from families. And uh, we would want to encourage uh, that uh, at the life of one and at the demise of one, we still have to unite as a country. We still have to unite as people of one Zambia, one nation, without any fear or favor. Thank you. I thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Max, we have been talking about um, mending our constitution or making changes to our constitution. It started from the NDF, where we saw Bill Number 10, or Constitutional Amendment Bill Number 10, being introduced on the floor of the House in Parliament it passed the first reading and it came for the second reading, which required the two third majority. Before Thursday, the PF was bubbling with confidence. And they were all over the news saying, We have garnered the numbers and we have 10 members from the UPN who are going to vote for us. And this bill, it is done and dusted. It's going to pass. Alas, the opposite happened. What is your reaction to the failure or the failing of bill? Number 10, your three minutes starts now. I think to start with, I want to thank the Patriotic Fund Party, the Patriotic Fund Government, under the leadership of President Edgar Chagwalung, for exhibiting excellent leadership by not interfering in the voting of Bill 10. As you are aware, we are the ruling party. So if there was need, if the president did not believe in democracy, he would have been fear, but he allowed people to vote just like they needed to. It's unfortunate that our colleagues from the United Party, for numerous defeats, UPND, did not see the need of Zambians, but instead they looked at the needs of UPND by allowing their leader, Mr. Hagainde Ichilema, to move them away from the voting place. It's unfortunate that um, they played politics to suit their political party and not really looked in the interests of Zambians. Bill 10 had a lot of positive clauses, a lot of good cause that if it was supported and it went through, a lot of people would have benefited. I will single out one or two or three or four. By virtue of them refusing to participate in the voting, I don't know, some were saying they were forced to go to that uh, Angry Lion party where they were enjoying Angry Lion instead of representing the people they claim to represent from their respective constituencies. By doing so, they denied the people of Zambia, an opportunity to have Zambia recognized as a Christian nation. They denied the people of Zambia an opportunity 
to have youths guaranteed of seats in parliament. They denied the people of Zambia the opportunity to have women guaranteed of seats in parliament. They denied the people of Zambia an opportunity to have our traditional leaders recognized by the government. So by whatever they did, I'm sure the people of Zambia will be able to tell which political party really means well for the people of Zambia. As PF, I believe and I'm convinced we did not look at Bill 10 to favor our party PF, but we looked at Bill 10 to favor the people of Zambia. It's unfortunate that young people like yourself and myself have been denied an opportunity by the UPND to be guaranteed of seats in parliament, and yet they exclaim to one, like they want to come and fix the nation. I don't know what they want to fix. Max, you have three minutes. Uh, thank you so much for your attention. Trevor, there were celebrations after Bill 10 failed to pass the second reading. Why, what do you make of uh, the, 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 the failing of Bill number 10 to pass the second reading from the UPA? We thank God things have gone the way they have gone. And uh, that was uh, at a stage of uh, representation. Members of parliament spoke out and voiced out to represent the Zambians at the level of registration. As an independent-minded individual and youth in Zambia, I would say we have won a battle, but we are yet to win a war, which is 2021 generations. So I would uh, advise most of our people, members of parliament, we still have one more mountain to climb before we celebrate more. And uh, it would uh, be very ill and uh, very wrong of me not to address the issues that which my comrade has uh, addressed and uh, has uh, given out to the nation and the nation has listened. There is nothing in view 10 that which he spoke about youths in parliament. Four years ago, the president, the Republican, the Republican president, Dr. Edgar Chagualung, did sign a national constitution and uh, in it he did not see it wise that uh, he should include youths in parliament in that constitution what would have been of uh, this process that which he did right now which was called Britain why is it that President Edgar Lungo has not appointed a youth as a minister because he still has those powers why hasn't he appointed women even up to now he still has those powers he can appoint even a comrade max chong he can appoint anybody else we are advocating for youth and we are the youths of this country regardless of how they view him regardless of how they may view anybody else who is out there the president has got the, is it eight or ten slots for him to appoint he would have appointed the a lot of other people but with a lot of due respect uh, there is already a, a house of chiefs. Maybe my comrade here, Max Chongo, should be could be interested to know that house of chiefs has been sitting from uh, as a, way back as 1975. I've got uh, some documents that which can uh, substantiate uh, my claim. So house of chiefs is a recognized body that which has been in existence over the years. So it's not something that which Butane would have addressed over overnight. And then uh, ECRO did not need Butane to appoint uh, disabled people. With due respect, Mr. Max, would you allow me to refer to one uh, honorable in the PF who is, with due respect, he's not my friend, he's not my enemy. But I want to illustrate to the Zambians that already in the PF there's already an existing member of parliament who is uh, differently abled. Thank you so much, Trevor. Your three minutes is up. Uh, Max, you talked about um, the progressive um, clauses that were in Bill Number Ten, and mind you, even if we are talking about Bill Number Ten, it's not. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a done. It's done and dusted. Others are saying it was buried. 
But uh, what do you think made bill number 10 to fail? Is it because the UPN didn't want to support it? Is it because they took the root of their leader, like you put it? What made bill number 10 to fail? <coughs> I think what made bill number 10 to fail is not about um, UPND members of parliament not wanting to support. Mm. Because from the way to go, I can tell you the truth that UPND members of parliament wanted to, were supporting Bill 10. Okay. But it has just exposed some dictatorship traits from their so-called leader. You know, because if he's not scared of anything, Mr. Aga and HDM would have allowed his members of parliament to go and vote. But the fact that we're getting these stories, although they're not confirmed, to say, look, there are some members of parliament who had their phones confiscated and they were forced to be that side against their wish, which to me shows that there were some um, dictatorship traits that were demonstrated on that particular day, which made it impossible for Bill Number 10 to vote. Because if they are saying they've got the ground, the way they've been talking on Facebook, if they are saying they are strong, they are going to defeat PF come 2021, why did not? Why is it that they failed to allow the members of parliament to go and vote? So to me, I think um, it was lack of uh, proper leadership qualities from the other camp, and that is the UPND. To me, I think it was lack of um, uh, patriotism, because we must be able to put our nation first before our political parties. And in this case, I'll tell you the truth, he's talking about um, women not being appointed. We've seen women that are ministers. We have Honorable uh, Mlinga Kambamba. We have Honorable Jean Kapata. We have Honorable Nkanduluo. We have seen Elizabeth Piri. We have seen a lot of women being appointed. He's talking about youths not being given an opportunity. The current presidential, um, the current special assistant to the president on political matters is a young man, Zuman. We've got Nathan Chanda, Juan Shamea, he's very young. We've got Christopher Gangombe, Kito Mea, he's very young. We had the likes of Binwe Umpundu, who was the DC for Kito, very young. So I don't know what he's talking about. The issue here is about being guaranteed, not them fighting for it. We are talking about people living with different disabilities being guaranteed of a seat in parliament and not what he's talking about. I'm sure he did not really understand the document in full and that's the reason why he's speaking like that. Thank you. Uh, Trevor, uh, coming to you, uh, the bill failed to pass second reading because UPND members didn't vote. What do you think made the UPND members not to vote for bill number 10 despite it having progressive clauses, like uh, Marx has mentioned, issues to do with the, the differently abled, issues to do with uh, the chiefs, issues to do with the women, the youths. What do you think made bill number 10 to fail? Well, thank you very much, Movie Television. I would like to state categorically that uh, if you have got a cup of coffee, or a teaspoon of coffee, a teaspoon of tea, uh, a, a tea bag, <coughs> a teaspoon of sugar and uh, Miro and all the other ingredients and then you are told that uh, uh, then we also have a teaspoon of poison. Regardless of how beautiful the menu was supposed to be when there is mention of poison, even if there were 499 correct points and then there was one point which was wrong, United Party for National Development would have not stood with the Patriotic Front on that bill number 10. So we realized that uh, there was no way under the provisions of Bill Number 10 that the president could be empowered with the powers to start demarcating provinces without consideration of parliament. So there was no way that as United Party for National Development would be hoodwinked. There are a lot of youthful people and a lot of uh, women that are, are capable to be appointed. 
I think uh, my colleague uh, is uh, mispressed with the uh, nominated member of parliament and an elected official. The people like Honorable Jean Kapata are elected officials. Uh, people like Honorable, those are Mandevu member of parliament, and he mentioned also of Munari member of parliament, Kampamba Murenga is of Rwansha. I'm well uh, informed with what is obtaining in the country when it comes to youth affairs. So I think my colleague, he's supposed to talk about why was uh, Mumbipiri uh, disappointed. These are issues that which we are looking at uh, in terms of women representation. We are people that are talking, not because we hate the PF, sir. We are people that are talking because this country, in terms of its core value and its constitution, there is no coherency and adherence. So as a result of such, we should not be misunderstood as people that hate the PF. We do not hate you. We are brothers. We love one another. We can smile when we meet outside this studio, even inside this studio. So when we want to talk about uh, a bill number 10, it was being used as a conveyor to keep PF in power perpetually. This has happened before. There were people that advocated for third term. Other political parties were formulated then. Scholars have heard them debate and saying, you know, bill number 10 has got no uh, linkage to the 2021 victory. But we want to say uh, FDD was formed at a time when uh, there was a third term debate for President Chiruva. UPND has been in existence. And FDD never had any members of parliament. So the parameters are different and the dimensions are different. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, Max, I saw you raising your hand. Do uh, you want to react to what Trevor has mentioned? Uh, I should just say, let me add a question and then you respond to the question plus something that you wanted to clarify or react to what Trevor said. Why is it that the PF for lack of better term, they are seen to be cry babies now, or crying the loudest now that you turn as well. I don't understand what you mean by saying. Okay, that. let me clarify. Just like today, uh, today uh, we saw uh, Comrade uh, Antonio Mwanza was having uh, a press briefing on Facebook, as well as uh, the likes of uh, of of of, of Yali. They were also reacting to Bill Number Ten and also pointing their fingers to the UPND to say they are the ones who, has, who have caused Bill Number Ten to fail, and and that is why I said why is it that it seems as if the PF now have tend to be crying babies after the fa the failing of Bill Number Ten. The Patriotic Front Party has got the party president, and that is President Edika Chagwalung. The Patriotic Front Party has got the Secretary General, and that is Honorable Davis Muila. And if the party is, if I was to follow the terms they are using, a crybaby party, mm. those two could have spoken. But if Antonio Mwanza goes on his own Facebook personal account. And he says, and I'm talking on, on behalf of the PF. And if he talks like that, you cannot judge to say the party is a crybaby. I don't understand why you would say the party PF is a crybaby party when we are dominating on the ground. No, on beauty. And no, no, no. People have got the right to register their concerns. Okay. And that does not mean that the party is a crime party. Hmm. So if Maxwell Chongo says, look, the Buten failed because Mr. Againde Ichilema exhibited traits of a dictator, does not mean that the PF party is crime. To be honest with you, they could have celebrated that Buten did not go through with those packs of hungry lion. But the real winners are PF when it comes to 2021. Because I want to wait and see <coughs> what they're going to tell people living with different disabilities to say, look, we blocked an opportunity for you to be guaranteed of seats in parliament, but we want you to vote for us. I want to see them, and I want to see them address the traditional leaders to say, look, we blocked, we blocked an opportunity for you to be recognized by government and we want you to vote for us. I want them to see talking to women to say we blocked an opportunity for you to, have, to be guaranteed of seats in parliament and vote for them. Those are things that I'll be looking forward to. The youths, they say they want to improve the welfare of the youths. I want to see how they're going to go back to the youths and tell them that we love you, we want to improve your welfare when they blocked an opportunity for the youths to be guaranteed of seats. I want to see what they want to bring to Zambia. We have seen what is happening in Nigeria where Christians are being attacked. We have seen in other countries where, you know, it's not clear whether it's a Christian nation or not what is happening. 
and Zambia is a Christian nation. I want to see what they're going to tell the people of Zambia when they start going to those churches for campaigns, if at all it truly reflects what they did. Now, coming back to what I wanted to say when I was lifting my hand, mm. my colleague here said he's well informed from UPND. Okay. Now let me pump a little bit of some sense in him. Honorable Kampamba Mlenga is not from Mwanshia. In Mwanshia, Honorable Kampamba Mlenga is not a member of parliament for Mwanshia. So on that one, you are not well informed. He's a member of parliament for Kalulushi. Yes. Is, so you oh, are I not think as I, informed it's, it's as you claim. God, isn't it? Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah Kampamba Mlenga is a, <laughs> a, a member of parliament for Kalulushi. In Mwanshia, we've got uh, Steve Chungu. Is it right? Okay. Thank you. Moving forward, uh, Trevor, don't you think you are going to have an uphill battle or you are going to have it difficult to convince people now that you've blocked these opportunities that you tend presented to the young people, to women and to the people that are differently able? Don't you think you've uh, carried a very big log on your shoulders to convince people to say vote for us after you block view number 10 i'm grateful for that question we are we have a humble and a humane task to present before the people of zambia the people of zambia have got a choice to make come 2021 the patriotic front government under president edgar chagualungu with all due respect did not need the view 10 to appoint Honorable Chirangwa, who is accepted. <coughs> I've said with all due respect, Honorable Chirangwa, Nixon Chirangwa, Luapura Province Minister, he's a disabled man, but he is in, he's a serving in the Patriotic Front Cabinet. They are playing double standards to the Zambians. They want to tell us now that they would need Buten to start appointing disabled people. We have had youths in government. They did not need built. We have had Stephen Masumba. Right now in the United Party for National Development, we have got youths like uh, Kangombe for Shesheke. We have got youths like Kakubo for Kapiriposhi. We have got youths that are representing Zambians. We have got Kambita Bryan for Zambezi East. So what are we talking about? We are talking about things that which the president can implement at a point of adoption. So let us not mix politics with leadership and governance issues. So as far as I'm concerned, their terminology, when it bounced back or thrown back to them of crybabies, they want to complain. They want to call the UPN Day crybaby party. But today, they were the people that were announcing the loudest that, you know, who we'll see the Buten is going through, you have bought many MPs, what and what. We want to tell them that the members of Parliament for United Party for National Development are not for sale. And the party itself, UPND, is not up for any type of cheap confusion that which they can actually dangle a carrot and then think that people can make a decision. Those are our representatives. And we are here as youths to discuss, even when I talk about well being well informed, I'm not talking about UPND affairs. I went to school. I studied the Zambian curriculum. So when I went to school to study the Zambian curriculum, I did not study the UPND curriculum. UPND found me when I had finished school. So when we are talking about these national issues, we should not ever, never be personal at all. We have got the interest of the country at heart. And we want to wish and level the praying field. We want to wish the best prayers or the best presidential material to win. There's no way that if I want to fight you, sir, I should tie your hands and then you throw you in a ring. I punch at you the way I would want to. That's what your party is doing. Your party is intimidating our people, detaining people that come to talk on a media briefing like this one. A person produces NRCs. You want to go and detain him instead of asking him? Your three minutes is up. Too. I am grateful. Sir. Thank you so much. Uh, away from bill number 10, let's make progress. And um, issues to do with tribalism. Marx, a number of leaders from the Patriotic Front and just members have uh, found themselves on the other side of Zambia by preaching or talking about tribal talks, tribal lines, championing tribal remarks. 
my question is, are we serious or committed as a nation, and I want to hear it from a young person like Mark Strongu, who is a leader or who is aspiring to lead in one way or the other, are we serious when it comes to dealing with the issues of uh, tribal talks in politics? First of all, before I answer that question, it would be very unfair because I lifted my hand. You, within your three minutes? Yeah. Mm. So let me um, start with um, reminding my colleague to stick to the topic because I heard your question. It was very straightforward. Mm. But you see, it was shocking to see that uh, the tune that was being played, it's a romantic song. And we were in a reggae. It's simple and straightforward. We were talking about the 10 by then. Mm. And I raised some points to see that these are the things that the UPND has denied the people of Zambia. Today, I picked up um, some posting. I think it was on Mr. Haga in the HLMA's page where he said America did not develop because of being a Christian nation. You understand? So already, we are talking about a leader that wants to start encouraging things like homosexuality, you know, all these things, because there's no bracket. Max, as you continue, is Zambia a Christian nation? It is a Christian nation. So, when you say Bill number 10 and Christianity... It is a Christian nation, but an emphasis was supposed to be given through that document. And they denied the people of Zambia to... You see, we have got a lot of different <laughs> denominations, mm. you know, and uh, it is just wise to make it known to everyone that Zambia is a Christian nation. And that is what our colleagues are not interested in because their partners, they practice some activities that are out of the brackets of Christianity. To my question now? Yeah. Your question. <laughs> Your question, you talked about tribalism. And you said a few leaders have been involved on the other side, like to the extent where you feel they were being tribal. Zambia has got a lot of uh, proverbs, and sometimes when one does not really understand a proverb or saying, they will misinterpret it mm. to being tribal. Mm. You understand? Yes. Uh, for instance, if someone says, work on work, it means that we are all Zambians. You know, we need to take care of each other. But people say, no, people from Eastern Province are saying, Wako no wako, meaning only them from Eastern Province. Are you getting my point? Mm. So when you talked about leaders, I was very interested for you to give me evidence to say this particular leader practiced what is called tribal politics. Okay. It's good that and that exactly what they said. Okay. Then I'll be able to respond. Okay. But we all know what happens in southern province. We all know what is happening in western province. Of course, now western province have said, no, we are not going to be part of this crusade. And they've seen the development that we have taken there, and western province has changed. But we know what is happening in, in, in southern province. Tribalism is not just a question of saying, no, you need to be a Bemba person, or like me who is from northwestern province. And really, but it's about what the leaders say themselves that represent these political parties. Thank you. Your three minutes, sir. Trevor, the same question. Do you think we are serious, or politicians yourselves are serious in ending tribal talks in Zambia? The tribal, tribalism and nepotism, to go about it with kids' gloves, it won't work. To begin with, our people are being dismissed in the presence of work irregardless of their qualifications and experience and exposure. Our people are being dismissed and disadvantaged <coughs> because of areas and regions where they hail from. So when we talk about tribalism, it's something that which as United Party for National Development, we are a party that which wants to unite this country. We are a party that which seriously want to engage the Zambian youth to register in the numbers and make sure that we, erad we eradicate this rot before it gets to our heads. We want to believe that there is a slogan which was left by our forefathers which states that one Zambia, one nation. And as such, we want to abide and live by the same. It is evident that uh, 
our former vice president GBM, in his remarks in the recent by-elections in Chirubi, he spoke very negatively of people from southern province. It is also notable of what Nkandurua spoke about in the previous Chirubi by-elections. It is also notable of Christopher Yaruma, what he spoke about in a certain public gathering. We are people that are following what has been spoken of. And there is also a, a man called Chandanyera, what he spoke about in the previous Chirubi by-election. We are not hurt, but we are just calling for God to review and shed more light in their lives. Because there comes a time when a leader is chosen by God to give leadership to this country, irregardless of our areas of affiliation or areas of emancipation. We would want to make sure that we redefine our living as Zambians and we coexist in peace and love. That is, that is for that reason our party is called United Party for National Development. There is never going to be development without unity. We must first of all unite ourselves. That's the reason why we are on this podium with my colleague and my comrade who I hold in high esteem, Comrade Max Chong. And I want to also urge the Zambians that are listening out there. It's never a forcing matter. It is supposed not to even be filled with propaganda that a person should say the UPND believes in this. The partnership we have is with the youth and women of this country. We do not have any other partnership that which anybody else can claim. Whatsoever and wherever the claims are varied, we are looking for votes from Zambians. We are not looking for votes from foreigners out there. I thank you. Max, I saw you raising your hand. You can react. Yeah. It's very funny when I look at my colleague here from uh, UPND, Mr. Trevor. Of course, he's a very good colleague, of, friend of mine. He's got a lot of energy. And when he speaks, he's speaking with a lot of confidence, which is misdirected. He said there are people are being chased from places of work or being fired. I want to remind Mr. Trevor to say, you know what? When the members were fighting for Wuntungwa and everyone else, the Tongas and the Westerners, actually, they were going to school. Today, as we speak, you find that most of these people in the civil service are either from southern province or western province. So it's very unfortunate if Mr. Trevor would come up with claims here to say, look, eh, our people are being chased. You can even tell when you go to the to the Zambia police service. Most of them, they are from either southern or western. When you go to the civil service, teachers, to mention but a few, you find that most of them are from southern province or western. So it's unfortunate that you can come out with so much energy that has been misdirected without knowing the real truth that is on the ground. I thank you. Uh, let me ask you now this question. Does do we have tribalism in Zambia? Do we have uh, yes, people we that are talking about uh, tribalism or championing tribalism in Zambia? Yes. yes, yes, we do. Max? Yes. Trevor? Yes, we do. Do people benefit from uh, tribal talks? Max? Most of those that have been found themselves enjoying and entertaining tribalism, they've never benefited. And Mr. Aga in the HLM is one of them. Do people benefit from tribal talks? Trevor? Well, I'm very grateful because as it is right now, uh, Mr. Presenter, without putting any emotions or empathy or sympathy to it, I would want to pose a question to my colleague. Does uh, Mr. Hagainde have power to appoint a permanent secretary? Does Mr. Hagainde have powers to appoint a minister? So when you look the at the... The answer is no. The answer is no, yes. So when you look at the composition of all the leaders that are in government right now, it's uh, the hand of the president and the seal of the president. I cannot blame him. Perhaps there are people that he, uh, he has a lot of advisors, competent advisors, who are much more better and qualified than I, I may be, but probably not well informed, and they are also biased. We are looking for a generation of leaders, a generation of leaders that which is not inclined towards the tribal talk. The cheap tribal talk is a rot in my ears and in my eyes. This country is going towards the trench. There is light at the end of the tunnel. And with that light at the end of the tunnel, we want to call upon every well-meaning Zambian 
youth and women out there to register as a voter so that we can eradicate this rot. We want to see a fruitful 2021, which does not include to employ your relatives, Comrade Max, to only dig, to only dig trenches in a road. We are looking for sustainable, formal employment opportunities for people that are in the PF, for people that are in the NDC, for people that are in the DP, for even the people that are in the diaspora out there who have run away from this country because the country has failed to give them solutions. Thank you, sir. Max. <laughs> Next time you invite us for a debate, put some water. My brother will collapse. <laughs> Let me give you Not a true picture all. of tribalism. Mr. Haka Indechlema is the leader for the United Party for National Development, or in fact, United Party for numerous defeats. We had a Mr. Chisanga, who was the vice president. What happened to him? He was hunted out. We had uh, Mr. Dr. Kanishas Banda was the vice president, what happened to him. We are the likes of Geoffrey Waliamwamba, GBM, who was the vice president, what happened to him. Now, look at this clique. Mr. Haga Indechlema is a leader. And then the only names we'd talk about, would hear from you is Mr. Haga Indechlema, Jack Mwimbu, and Gary Nkombo. That's typical tribalism. Now, when you look at the Patriotic Front Party set up, the president, is from Eastern Province. And the running mate, the Vice President, Bamayova Inongewin, from Western Province, that should explain to you which party believes in tribalism. I end there, thank you. Let's move forward. Uh, 2021 is uh, around the corner, like I said in my preamble, that with uh, 59 days to go before we say our bye-byes, uh, to 2020. The Electoral Commission of Zambia has embarked on an ambitious project of um, registering new voters, 9 million in total, and doing away with the old voter register. Now, we are supposed to start, the physical voter registration was supposed to start on the 28th of last month, October, but we are told that it has been pushed forward we are going to start on the 9th of November. And uh, the Electoral Commission of Zambia did announce to Zambia that the online pre-voter registration, only 130,000 people have managed so far to register on the platform of online pre-voter registration. Trevor Mwinde, do you think the Electoral Commission of Zambia will be able to meet the target of registering 9 million voters and also do you agree that we should do away with the old voter register? First of all it will be a failure on my duties as National Youth Secretary to fail to address the cheap tribal talk that which is being perpetuated by the PF in our party and in this country. Within your three minutes? Within my three, the, my three minutes I'll sacrifice one minute. <laughs> I would like to state categorically that in the UPND also just like in the PF the PF when it was begun by Michael Sata the youth chairman was Honorable Chishimba Kambuiri, who at this time has faced more threats and detentions than any other person. Previously, there was Honorable Kampiongo, who happens to be the Home Affairs Minister. We are people that have got the details of this country on the fingertips. So when we want to discuss things of this country, we must not be judgmental. Let us use the facts that which are in existence. And these facts, they are documented. So as far as we are concerned, the UPND has never had a chance to even have a Tonga vice president. The president has been a Tonga. We have had Richard Kapita. We have had Chisanga and all the names that which he mentioned. But they have got also their own interests, which the Zambian people have monitored very well. They had interests that which were mispressed by far greater than the people of Zambia, but their own tummies. If we are to look where those people are today, others are directors, others are serving in the PF without any voting that which was done by the Zambian people. So as we speak right now, let us not be judgmental. Hagainde Ichirema, he has peaceful youths in the names of Trevor Mwinde and the crew that which is out there listening. Even him in the due course of time, because the people in this politics that insult the most, they defect. Take that. The people that insult the most, 
that speak derogative language and that speak abusive language against opponent political parties, they are defectors. They are are you saying either. Marx who is going to defect the UPN? I am not a prophet. I'm not a Jewish prophet. I'm just telling no, you that we have it. observed over the years that the people that have been insulting, they always leave lanes to others. So let us discuss politics of what is obtaining in this country. My question, so I'm, the I'm afraid ECZ, you are just remaining with seconds now. Yes, the ECZ has not done the best for the Zambian people. Considering the numbers that which they are very ambitious, they mentioned they want to register 9 million voters. They have registered about 130 in the time and all the energies that which has been wasted, they have not done the best for the Zambian people so far. Max, the same question, the ambitious number, 9 million new voters, the Electoral Commission of Zambia wants to do away with the old voter register. Uh, the opposition has cried far, they are against the idea. The PF, I've heard from a number of leaders who are in support. I had uh, Comrade uh, Chanoda the other day who was saying we are in support of the route that the Electoral Commission of Zambia has taken. I want to hear it from you. Max Chong, are you in support of the route that they have taken and looking at the <coughs> reports that we've received so far? From the time that we started the online pre-voter registration, only 130,000 people have managed to register. First of all, let me make mention to my colleague here that egos do not take flying lessons from chickens. And as Maxwell Chong, there is no possibility of defecting to UPND that you must take it from me. And I don't know why you even you would even think of me defecting to your opinion, because you will not form government. Now, coming back to the question, I am 100% in support with the route that ECZ has taken. You know, uh, when I look at the number of voters they've managed to capture at the moment, it has just reminded me of something. Like prior to 2016 general elections, I traveled <coughs> almost the whole country. So I understand what that number, according to what they intend to, has taught me is how UPND behaves. On social media, they act all loud and that. But when you go on the ground, we show them who's in charge of the ground. You see, when you're talking about registering voters online, it's not all the places that you would that people would access such facilities so i expected it to move at a very slow pace but i can assure you that the time they will be doing the actual physical registration you will see that they will touch that number they talked about trevor still on the same voter registration or the the the, the process that they have taken the reason why the Electoral Commission of Zambia didn't start the voter, the physical voter registration on the 28th of October is because there has been an extension to the mobile NRC issuance. Are you happy from the UPND so far the way things have been when it comes to NRC or mobile issuance of NRCs? Because you've um, cried for I'm grateful. It must be noted that uh, in these schools across Zambia, there is a subject called geography. The population distribution of this country is well noted and well, well booked. So there is no secret under heaven. So if we are to talk about NRC issuance, the PF has been biased. We have had the presses in southern province, northwestern province, western provinces, central province, and part of Rusaka province where people are struggling to get NRCs, of which these NRCs are used for most school entra uh, entrants and uh, work entries and any college or even any other informal kind of employment. So youths out there, you must realize that you have got a government that which is not interested in your welfare. You have got a government that which is not interested in your welfare. Anybody who inhibits or stops you from getting an NRC, national, that's why it's called a national registration card. It's as good as a passport internally to recognize me as a Zambian citizen. But where we have a sitting government, 
which is biased towards handling of the issuance of the same. So PF is not interested in seeing that youths are empowered with access to fundamental wheels of progress. You can also talk about governance issues, of which you also realize to say, in the last 30 days, how many arrests have been made? How many detentions? How many police interviews? How many invitations to the first headquarters, to the division have been made from the UPND? And how many have been made from the PF? You find that it's zero. You realize that if a person comes to stand on this podium, some of us have been to prison. And it's a road that which we can also be happy to walk if at all there's evidence against us. We're not standing here to misinform the country. We are standing here as agents and advocates of change. And the change is coming. Come 2021, youth vote for Agenda Ichireba. We thank you all. Max, as I pose uh, this question also to you, to say, uh, You've been accused, or government has been accused, and the party has been accused when it comes to issuance of NRCs. Please, you can even react to what Trevor <laughs> said. You know, when I saw uh, Trevor walking in, I, before he even came, I said he's going to come with a Bible. Is it bad in a Christian I, nation to walk no, no, with a no, Bible? No, it's not a Bible that I meant, oh. because I knew he was going to come with notes that have been prepared for him. So he's talking about what you're not even asking him. Prepared by somebody? Yes, because if he really knows what he was going to talk about here, he would have come just the way I've come. Let it come from your head. He's talking about the PF government under the leadership of President Edgar Chagolongo being unfair when it comes to NRCs. Now I want to remind Mr. Trevor that even in 2016, prior to 2016 general elections, when the current um, Secretary General of the party was Home Affairs Minister, I remember vividly the first places they took the materials for NRCs was opposition stronghold. And PF strongholds were the last strongholds to, be, to have access to that, meaning that the government was trying by all means to be very fair to the opposition, and they lost. Today, as we speak, they also started from there. And then most of PF strongholds, they delayed taking those. When you say they started from there, uh, Max, uh, phase one, <laughs> southern, western, central, Lusaka, we're not in phase one. Phase one involved northern, Luapula, Copper Belt, northwestern. So no. when you say they started from northwestern there. Northwestern is who strong. So what is wrong with this time they picked northwestern and mm -hmm. that time they started from southern province and... So Northwestern is who's stronghold? You've said you've gained the ground. Others are from the PF have said it's no longer their stronghold. We've got councillors there. Of course. That is what we've been told by the but PF. But I'm saying, traditionally, Northwestern is who's stronghold? Is Northwestern Wapula? Is Northwestern Mchinga? Is Northwestern Copper Belt? Is Northwestern Northern Province? Northwestern is opposition stronghold. Yes, we've gained the ground because the people of Zambia now appreciate what the patriotic fund government under the leadership Is this still a stronghold for the for opposition? Northwestern? I don't know. For now, it's dancing. <laughs> so when we say they started from the eastern, traditionally, northern, Wapula, traditionally, Copa Belt. Tra traditionally, Northwestern was regarded as what? Prior to 2016 general elections, it was regarded as who's who stronghold? The opposition. Right? So in will I just be told, right to say that the first one started in the I just reminded you that prior to 2016 general elections, mm. They started with the opposition strongholds. Mm. All right. So this time around, they start with the, the northwestern, the, western. This time they picked northwestern and other to balance up. But northwestern is who balance up northwestern, northern, Luapula, Copper Belt, and eastern. Is that balancing up? Yes, it is. Last time they picked southern. I'm saying when 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 you look at the strongholds, you've mm -hmm. said the UPND. Yeah, they are strong in Northwest. But the, U, well, the UPND, they only claimed of three provinces in mm. terms of stronghold. Okay. So if they picked Northwestern and maybe four from our side, of course it balances because they only have three. Thank you. <laughs> Gentlemen, as uh, we, are, we are winding down, Trevor, what do you make of the empowerments that the Patriot Front has, has embarked on? We've seen different ministries giving empowerments to different groups, the women, the youths, and others. And th th let me just say, from the, U from the opposition and the UPND, it seems 
You are saying no one is benefiting. It's not benefiting the indigenous youths, only PF members. There is a political empowerment program in this country, that which is run by Clement uh, Tembo from Kawata. And the, I'm so sure that he's the aspiring candidate for 2021 Kawata constituency. Considering that Butane has fallen, even Luminda is no longer the favorite of the PF. It must be in the public domain. You are the spokesperson. So I must be able to say <laughs> Why are you speaking on he's the PR? favorite of the president. And he has been Ruben doing a lot of political of champions, uh, champion uh, maneuvers, uh, where uh, the PF Chitenge material has been on the table of where, because if it was a national presidential, just like the presidential housing initiative in PHI, it benefited all Zambians that were able to afford at that time. So as far as we are concerned, this country has been taken to the political trenches that which we must change the tone and direction. Mm. And the UPND stands ready to offer that alternative. And everybody else who is listening out there, we want to thank you for the time and the effort that we have taken into this program and the affairs of this country. But we must redeem Zambia and make sure that we redefine the direction of where this country is headed to. Thank you. Max, your empowerment or the empowerment that is being given by government has been downplayed by the opposition. It's very the PF members are benefiting. It's very unfortunate that uh, Mr. Trevor does not understand um, the difference between government and the party. The empowerment scheme that um, Clement Tembo is championing is an initiative by the president. But the Ministry of Youth and Sport, the Ministry of Youth and Sport has provided a lot of empowerments, empowerment opportunities for <coughs> the people of Zambia. And these people from UPND, they have been told by their leader not to have anything to do with the PF government. So they should be the last people to cry foul because their leadership has told them not to participate. Not cry. <laughs> their leadership has told them not to participate in anything that the government is doing positive. You know, we have seen a lot of people being expelled from their party because of being part of government programs. So I think UPND is not being fair and it's being um, biased when it starts uh, claiming that the PF government under the leadership of President Edgar Chagalungu is not empowering the people of Zambia. Because we've done it, we started with buses. Recently, uh, Honorable Emmanuel Mlenga is almost everywhere empowering the people of Zambia. And their leadership has told them not to participate, so they should be the last people to actually comment on empowerment. Thank you so much, uh, Max, for making an appearance on uh, Blanto. Hope to see you soon. Thank you so much. And Trevor, many thanks from the UPND for making God an appearance. And I hope to see you soon. God Gentlemen, we'll be having uh, a photo session after the, the program. This has been the fearless debate in the land of Zambia, Blunt Talk. If this is when you are just joining us, Wasangana today. My name is Kelvin Dabola, Chief Fork of the Diesel Engine. Good evening. This is Zambia. Yeah, yeah. Give us you, give us. This is Zambia, the home of copper.